When the pandemic hit, a lot of people were put out of work at Pike Place Market, and many had the kind of jobs that don't allow for an unemployment check. The buskers, the musicians who play there, are iconic figures, providing joy and entertainment to locals and to tourists. Busking, in many cases, can also provide a significant portion of a musician's income. Jeannie Rock and Carly Ann Calbero set up the Busker Relief Fund to help their fellow performers make it through this tough time. Sitting around at home, by that point, we weren't playing music in the market. So I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. Um, so this would be a way for me to uh, play some music because we've been doing the live streams um, and also just pick up some funds because I know if I'm not playing music, no one else is, obviously. And some people were certainly relying on the income, but just about as much, if not more, than I was. People who look at the buskers at the market, especially tourists, maybe think that this is something that's just kind of fun. It's a feature of the market. People are doing this, you know, for their entertainment. But it's a living for a lot of people, and that's important for us to understand during this time. I think two-thirds of our applicants are actually um, above 50 percent. So they make over half of their income just by busking at the market, um, which is pretty crazy if you think about it if like half of your income was just wiped out um, exactly yeah yeah exactly. yeah just as um folks have been applying to the fund we set out the application yesterday actually and just started allocating funds for the first time um so we've got some data coming in now um from the short application that we came up with so yes about 60 percent of about 29 applicants now have indicated that um the majority of their income comes from busking so you're raising money for this fund and now dispersing the funds to the buskers. Just Terrific. started yesterday. Yeah, it was really Start, exciting. Okay. Terrific. And in terms of what happened at the market, this I mean, it's been the beating heart of this community for such a long time, and seeing musicians there has been part of the experience. So what was that like personally for you as things began to close down and people dispersed? I mean, it's it's such a strange thing because like I've been busking at the market for nine ish years now, and I remember getting started and and seeing like Whitney Monje out there like playing and and just wanting to get out there and and be amongst the buzz and like that action and stuff out there. So it's it was so weird to just see it slowly get quieter and quieter, and then we weren't allowed to play. This is the longest period of time that I've gone in nine those nine years without busking. And it's just, it's so crazy. You must have a lot of music built up in there that needs to get out. Yeah, I think so. That's why, <laughs> I mean, the live streams have been great. It's been like, we get to play and kind of derp around a little bit. <laughs> um, but also, I mean, we're, we're making a little bit for the fund every time that we're, we're doing the live stream. So it's, it's a win-win. It's interesting to me that so many people are kind of making this work on their own. You guys came up with an idea, you're looking out for your community, and I'm thinking that might have some long-term benefits beyond just helping people replace their income for the time being. Have you thought about that? We're kind of just, we're... We're just kids? Yeah. <laughs> it feels like, <laughs> yeah, we're... Well, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's interesting because we actually received an email from um, one of the buskers, uh, Jeffrey Circus, who plays the piano. Um, out in the market and he was just talking about how he had you know we we busk but we're also musicians so folks are trying to hone their craft and create albums and you know record music and that kind of thing he was like you know I put all this money into recording something not knowing that this pandemic was going to hit so um, I'm gonna put away more money now in the future so you know people think about this in terms of like a long-term career um, and if nothing else I hope that this boosts visibility for the community that is the buskers for folks in and around Seattle, um, just to see us as more of a legitimate musicians who also play gigs, um, who really are good at their craft at a entertainment. It's, it's such a bald way of putting yourself out in the world. You know what I mean? I actually was inspired to busk by this one. Um, we became friends because we both found each other at the market. And I had actually listened to her playing in and around Seattle probably seven years ago. I think I heard her and I was like, oh my God, it's another Asian girl who's playing music at the market and she does the exact same thing that I want to do. So I'm thinking maybe it's inspiring kids. You know, I've gotten messages from parents and things like that. They're like, my kid saw you the other day and now she wants to sing and play the guitar. And I'm just like, yes, we need more girl musicians out there in the world because there's not very many of us at all.
It's a brave thing to do. I mean, you get a pretty immediate visceral reaction from passersby and people <laughs> listening, so there's no escaping um, it's the instant response from people. And I love that you can do that because I'm not sure <laughs> if I would be that brave. But what I'm also trying to give you credit for is that just the act of doing this is an act of building community and letting people know that somebody cares about what happens to them. And that has a bigger effect than the income. I think that um, growing, I'm kind of growing up in the market, it's, it's interesting. Everybody does take care of each other anyway. Like you go and get your coffee from Ghost Alley, you kind of walk around and you go over to Frank's and get your produce and stuff. And it's, it donuts. is, yeah, donuts. Like it's just one big community. And I think that, I don't, I don't know if we can take credit for it necessarily just because the market has given us so much as it is. Well, you're contributing to it, and obviously income is what we all have to have to get by, but also that connection is really important. And please don't say donuts unless I can have some. It's just oh, sorry. <laughs> upsetting to me on this. How dare you? Tell me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about the musicians who've come out of the market, some of the inspiration, because there's a reason people go there. I mean, there's Brandi Carlile when she came back with Dave Grohl. That was so cool. Oh. Um, we, uh, I was like standing right next to Dave Grohl and like didn't even notice it until like he walked up because he was just unassuming. Um, and then we got to see the head and the heart down there too because um, they came back to just do like this random thing in, in this place that we call the cave. It's a big open space. The acoustics are amazing. And I mean, these musicians that have made it big and they come from here. They were, you know, they cut their teeth here. I just love those two, I really do. We'll hook you up with a link so that you can donate to the Buskers Fund if you like. And stay tuned for the end of our show. Jeannie and Carly Ann will have a special performance. We'll be back with 